I think there's a great future for luxury real estate in San Miguel de Allende. We're looking forward to some great opportunities in 2024. Hi, viewers. Welcome back to another video. I am Maya, your interview host for Berkshire Hathaway Home Services here in San Miguel de Allende in Central Mexico. Today, we're interviewing Greg Gunter. He's the broker and co-owner, along with his business partner, Alma, of the sole Berkshire Hathaway Home Services office here in San Miguel de Allende. Hi, Greg. How's it going? Hey, Maya. How are you? Good to see you today. Good to see you. Happy to have you here. Um, to discuss today's topic, which I find really interesting. Uh, today, we'll talk about uh, unveiling the future of luxury real estate in San Miguel de Allende. So um, a very, very exciting topic to discuss. Um, I would like you to share, Greg, with us some of the appeal of Mexico's high-end property market. And well, why don't you tell us why Mexico is a hot spot for luxury real estate to start? You know, one of the biggest appeals for a lot of uh, my investor clients uh, or buyers, you know, some of them are, are buyers for a second home, some of them are investors from a rental property, is our proximity to the United States. A lot of people look at uh, Portugal and Spain and some other places like that, but, you know, that's a full day to get over there. And a lot of people love the fact that we're just a short two-hour flight to the United States. So there's a big appeal for people that still have family in, in the United States. Maybe they still have some business. They like to go back and forth to the U.S. That's a big appeal. The cost factor is another really big appeal. It's very affordable in San Miguel de Allende. Homes are uh, a third to a fifth of the cost that they might run on the coast in the United States, you know, in places like California or New York or Florida. So the affordability is really a uh, prominent reason why a lot of people will look in uh, in Mexico and especially in San Miguel de Allende, the affordability, lifestyle, affordability, and proximity. Those are kind of the key. Oh, and climate. Of course, we can't forget climate. We'll probably talk about that a little later, but those are the really strong appeals of the uh, luxury real estate market in San Miguel de Allende. Yeah, it's the whole package. Uh, and as you said, it's, just very, very interesting how people automatically think about the beach when they want to move to Mexico or to just uh, uh, warmer weather, to have warmer weather. And they choose the beach without really knowing um, what what's like to live there. So they end up kind of wanting to find another option. And that's where you come in to, to show them. Exactly. San Miguel. Yeah. And um, well, San Miguel's in the middle of, yeah, I was going to say San Miguel's in the middle of Mexico viewers. So we're nowhere near the beach. It's five hours to the beach. It's not that far, but yeah. we're in a central uh, highlands here. So it's a, it's a central desert plateau, much better weather year round spring like climate. Yeah. I mean, the beach is great, but I can only handle it for a week, you know, <laughs> after that, I need to come back and, and, you know, it's like all the bugs and it's super humid. So San Miguel has fantastic weather, fantastic lifestyle. And also it's pretty, um, as you were saying, costs here um, regarding the, the lifestyle you would get, like the value you get uh, for every dollar you invest is just, it doesn't have any um, comparison. So with that being said, it would be great if you could tell us a little bit about some luxurious properties here in, in San Miguel to just to give viewers a glimpse of what they can expect and how um, San Miguel looks like, these uh, properties uh, that you've sold or that you have like in your in your portfolio. Can you just talk yeah. a little bit about those? Happy to share a couple of examples and we'll, we'll insert perhaps a few photos in here so you can see what uh, homes I'm talking about viewers. I just sold a home for uh, $3.2 million here in San Miguel de Allende. It was a uh, three-year-old home, so very new construction. It had every single amenity you can possibly imagine. The owner joked that he could turn the swimming pool on from Paris. It was a smart house. Smart house technology is a little bit rare here in San Miguel de Allende, but this had the full smart house technology all solar, saltwater swimming pool, elevator, 17-foot ceilings, the, its own transformer. It had 16 mini splits, which are those units that are in each room that provide heat and air conditioning. So the same thing as having, you know, central heat and air all through the house. Every amenity you can imagine, this home sold for $3.2 million, and it was only an 11-minute walk to the Hardeen. 
that came out to be viewers. This is an important figure for those of you that follow real estate, $317 a square foot. Now, if you're coming, if you're watching this from California or you've been accustomed to California prices, you know that's probably a fifth to uh, a seventh or an eighth of what you pay in California for the same type of property with all those amenities. So the affordability is phenomenal here, but most people might go, well, I can't afford a $3.2 million home. Here's another one, a little more uh, on a, a slightly more affordable scale. It's 1.35 million, same sort of thing. Now it's a little further away from Centro, but it is a large property with open views to the canyon, long distance, great green views, huge swimming pool and jacuzzi in the back with a large lawn area, a glass wall gym, dual changing rooms and bathrooms for the swimming pool, four bedrooms, a media room, a six car garage, and it's in a gated community. It's a million three fifty. Same kind of equation there, except a lot more affordable. In this particular case, it's under $200 a square foot. So amazing values like that, lest you think, however, that we're nothing but a million dollar market. We, of course, have homes that will start at about 350. So in our market here, you can still find a good neighborhood, nice home, basic amenities, perhaps. So they'll always have a whole house water filtration system and whatever. But generally, your pricing is going to start at about 350. Our luxury market here starts at about 500 and above. So we have lots of good examples of those. We've got a listing, for instance, in one of the great newer golf courses here called Las Ventanas. And that's a home that's right at about a half a million dollars. It's got a wine cellar. It's got mini splits. It's got a great little terrace, a brand new kitchen. It's been fully renovated and on a golf course community for a half a million dollars. Now, you'd be hard pressed to find a condo for that kind of price in most of the United States. So that's a feel for some of our you know, luxury uh, pricing here in, uh, in San Miguel de Allende. These homes are breathtaking. They're beautiful. And after looking at this um, footage of these beautiful, beautiful homes, I guess our viewers would like to understand the Mexican real estate market in more detail. So why don't you give us just an overview of the Mexican real estate market and the factors that influence it, uh, make it maybe more specific towards San Miguel? Because as you know, San Miguel works very different from the rest of Mexico. So why don't we talk a little bit about that? Sure. San Miguel de Allende, Mexico in general probably, but San Miguel de Allende follows uh, the American home market a fair amount. So when the market started to slow a bit, you know, post-COVID, the market did nuts. Well, actually, uh, even during COVID, the United States market did great. No one wanted to come down in 2020 to San Miguel de Allende, so no one was buying homes in 2020, but we rebounded dramatically, just like in the U.S. in 2021 and 2022. Now, as most of you viewers know, in the third quarter of 2022, the market started to slow down and we followed suit here in San Miguel de Allende. There tends to be a bit of a lag between the United States and, and you know, San Miguel. So our market slowed down even a little bit more in early 23. And this year has been a slower market Mostly more because from the global economic uncertainty, people kind of being unsure of some of the bank closures that have happened, interest rates being high, you know, those types of factors that sort of affect the overall economy and people being a little less uncertain if they're ready to buy a second home. Ironically, interest rates, which are really high in the United States, of course, and sort of a big deal right now, don't typically tend to affect most of my buyers down here because most of them are buying all cash. For those of you that kind of want a little comparison between the two, this is an interesting point. Um, you can get financing in, in Mexico, specifically here in San Miguel de Allende. You just need to be aware that financing is going to run about 300 to 350 basis points more than it does in the United States. So your interest rates here in Mexico right now are running about 10.6 to 10.8 percent on a, on a loan. Most of my clients find that they can get money cheaper either with a, a HELOC, you know, an equity loan in the United States or with a, a margin loan on their investment account. So that's kind of where we stand on the market right now. It's a little slower. It's a great opportunity for buyers coming in because there's a little more negotiating room. Homes tend to be on the market just a little bit longer. So sellers are negotiating a little bit more. We're kind of at a good balance between a seller's market and a buyer's market. I wouldn't call it completely a buyer's market because it's still very popular here, 
but much better for my buyers coming in, you know, in terms of being able to negotiate a bit more. That's incredibly interesting. Thank you for, for sharing this. And well, now that we have talked a little bit about the past with the COVID pandemic, um, would you mind discussing a little bit what trends are expected in 2024 regarding the real estate market in San Miguel de Allende? I think we're going to continue down the path that we've seen for most of this year. I don't think we're looking at, at a quick rebound in 2024. I think we will continue to have good values in San Miguel de Allende, not quite the same high level of appreciation that we saw in 2021 and, and early 2022. Um, you know, historically, you can see appreciation rates of about 18 to 20 percent in parts of Centro. In other words, closer to the Hardin, the popular areas of town. We're not seeing quite that same level of appreciation, uh, and I think in 2024, it will be the same. The appreciation will have kind of leveled off. So again, a good opportunity for buyers probably throughout most of 2024, because the values will continue to be good. Um, we won't see the market drop. You know, we don't get that kind of a, it's more of a pause in the market, not really a drop. It's just sort of a pause. So you'll see better opportunities for purchasing not having to not having to uh, often fight multiple bids like you have in the United States. You know, where you have three or four bids on one property. We don't tend to have that here, and I think you'll find the same in 2024. A little less uh, competition for properties, better values, and better negotiation ranges for probably most of 2024. A good well, opportunity for buyers to come down. <laughs> yeah, that's like only great news. So I am sure our viewers are eager. To know how to find luxury properties here in Mexico. So it would be great, Greg, if you could share some tips on how to search for and, well, identify high-end properties in Mexico, in San Miguel de Allende. San Miguel in particular is, is, a, is a unique market. We don't really have a viable MLS system here like a lot of my clients are accustomed to seeing in the United States. The MLS that we have here is, is sort of a basic repository. It doesn't give of, of listings. It doesn't give time on the market or average sales per square foot or you know average sales uh, for a particular neighborhood. It's simply a repository of listings. So it's really helpful for clients to find a very detailed website that provides as much information about not only real estate, but about the market, about the city, about uh, the neighborhoods here. And one of the nice things about the Berkshire Hathaway Home Services real estate, uh, website that we've created, we cover all the information that you might want to find about um, San Miguel as a city, for instance. We have 50 or 60 articles on San Miguel de Allende just as a city, as a destination. So a lot of my viewers that aren't familiar with the city can research the popularity, why we're such a popular market. But then again, you can also look on the website and learn about the neighborhoods. So we have 13 different neighborhood profile videos so far. So the viewers can learn about every single neighborhood in town and kind of compare. And then they'll sort of know what neighborhoods might fit their parameters and their lifestyle better than other neighborhoods. So I think finding a very comprehensive website uh, that provides a lot of information for you is very helpful. Another way to sort of identify these properties is when you communicate with my company and, and on Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, your first response back will include a Q&A info handbook that we always send you. And it identifies the different areas, the values of different parts, the process of purchasing, the process of looking for homes. So it's a very comprehensive 15-page booklet that helps walk my clients through the process of looking for and investing in homes in San Miguel. It needs to be an educational process because many of my clients are unaccustomed to purchasing in Mexico. It's a different country, and especially in San Miguel de Allende, where we are in the middle of the country. So you do own fee simple here. It's a very simple, very different process than buying a condo on the coast because you actually own fee simple just like in the United States. But my booklet will walk you through all that. So that's the important the key, I think, is to finding a real estate website and a company that's very informative for people when they're coming from uh, the United States. Yeah. And what about the significance of working with a reliable local real estate agent as well? Yeah. Picking a specific agent is really important. So here's one of the key um, factors that I would look for viewers. 
you're going to want to work with a realtor that has the certified international property specialist designation. That's always very good. Or at the very least, work with a brokerage that's run by someone with that designation. That's a National Association of Realtors designation that one has to take a special series of courses for and get a, a special designation for. Those are the types of realtors that are accustomed to working with uh, international buyers. So an American buyer coming to a foreign market like Mexico will want to work with someone that has that designation. That's a very good designation. This, the rest of this would sort of be the same caveat that you would have in the United States. You know, work with someone that's very knowledgeable about the market, work with someone that's had a lot of sales experience, preferably more time, someone that will work to represent your interest. I know a lot of my clients are a little confused about, well, should I call the listing agent directly and work with them? And of course, I always educate my clients, it's better to work with a buyer's rep, work with someone that's going to represent you and protect your interest in the uh, in the process of looking for a home and actually negotiating on that home if you find something that you like. A buyer's representative is going to know the different markets, the history of the property, you know what's been going on in the market, and they're going to educate you about that and help you get the best opportunity for any home that you might be looking at. So that's really the important part of, of researching in a foreign market like this is work with a very educated and experienced realtor that's actually licensed also. Some of the people in, the, in San Miguel de Allende and many parts of Mexico are trying to sell homes and they're not even licensed. So that's another important feature. That sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? Because in the United States, everybody's licensed, but that's not always the case in Mexico. Yeah, and that's something uh, very important to take into account when uh, looking for a yeah. home here and well it's very very valuable uh, information um, now let's talk about the I don't know the paperwork involved all the legal aspects you know because I think viewers uh, also uh, want to know about that it might be the most stressful part of this whole process so why don't you discuss the legal aspects of buying a property in San Miguel de Allende including foreign ownership loss I think that's important yeah yeah, it is really important, especially because we are in central Mexico. So that's the important thing to know. When you're investing in real estate along the coast or along the border, you you don't actually own the property. You don't actually purchase the property. You have the property through a bank trust called a fideicomiso. However, when you're in central Mexico, like San Miguel de Allende, it's very much like the United States. So in, in honesty, the, uh, the ownership process is just like the United States because you own it, fee simple, the deed is in your name, but really the whole process of going through the purchase process and uh, the ownership process is very much like in the United States. We use contracts that are based on boilerplate language from the United States. We use escrow companies that are just like in the United States. My company in particular uses a, an escrow company that's insured and bonded just like in the U.S., believe it or not, that's a rarity in Mexico. So ask your agent if the uh, escrow company that they're using is insured and bonded. That's kind of an important point. But the biggest, the biggest thing again is to to stress the fact that it's you're you're owning it fee simple here. So the deed is in your name. Nobody can take the property away from you, and it's just like owning a property in the United States. We walk you through that process so you understand that all the way through closing and are right there with you, even, even behind after the closing process to kind of help you with the rest of the process of getting a property manager to help you manage the property, you know, how to pay your taxes, your property taxes, those kinds of things. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. And would you mind maybe walking us through the process of purchasing a property and the paperwork that's involved in more detail, please? Sure, sure. When you when you find a property that you like, you know, working with uh, one of our realtors on our team, <clears throat> you might go back and forth, just like in the United States on, on bids. You know, it's interesting. A lot of my clients go, well, where I come from, there's an asking price and you have to bid above that. Especially that was true uh, during the pandemic, maybe a little bit less so, but a lot of the coastal properties are still like that. You have an asking price and you have to bid above it. In Mexico, it's just the opposite. You have an asking price and you're typically negotiating off that asking price. So you'll typically go back and forth on a couple of offers, finally reach in a, a mutually agreeable asking or a, you know selling price between the buyer and the seller. You'll sign an initial offer contract. From there, we'll open up an escrow account. 
you'll do an inspection on the property. And this is the nice thing, team, to think about for all you, all you viewers that are wondering about the process. There's no money that exchanges hands until you've done an inspection on the home. So we typically have seven to 10 calendar days to do an inspection. You'll see if there's anything that needs to be done to the home. You can negotiate that with a seller. Once that's all done and you've said, okay, seller, I want you to fix this or that needs to be done. Typically, there's not a, a lot of negotiation on that. I might point that out. It's a little different from the United States from the standpoint that homes here are, tend to be sold on an as-is basis. So most of the negotiating that happens after the offer has been agreed upon is for items that can't be seen. So if there's an old gas tank or something like that that's beyond its lifespan, you might negotiate on that because that's something that you haven't been able to, to see and, and know about in advance. So once you've uh, negotiated any points with the seller, you then remove the inspection contingency and only then are you putting money into an escrow account? Now, again, we use a licensed and bonded escrow uh, account that's based in the United States. If you're a buyer coming from the US, your money goes from a US account to another US account, that's the escrow account. And typically the seller is American. So your funds never leave the United States. It's a very easy process. It's a wire transfer that goes from one domestic account to the other. Um, that's a, typically a 10% earnest money deposit that goes into the escrow account. You then uh, will be applying for what's called an SRE permit, and that's a permit to uh, purchase property as a foreigner in Mexico. It's a very easy process. It's a, it's a rubber stamp process that everyone gets, typically very quickly. Uh, and then we you know, have about a 10-day uh, lag time until the final closing. And by the way, I, I guess I didn't mention this yet. The total time frame from the time you get an accepted offer until closing is generally 30 days in our market. So it's a little bit faster than the United States. Again, that's because it's generally almost always an all cash transaction. So it's a relatively short closing period here. You'll be funding the last 90% of the purchase price into escrow about three days before closing. And then you'll also be wire transferring those closing costs that you're, that you're going to see. Now, there's another little difference here between our closing cost in Mexico uh, versus the United States. Viewers, remember your property taxes are super low in San Miguel de Allende. The way that the government sort of adjusts that is there is an acquisition tax. Some places in the United States call it a transfer tax. Down here, we call it an acquisition tax, and that's 4% of the purchase price. And then there's another about 1.1% of the purchase price that are your typical closing costs like you would pay in the United States for the escrow company and the title company. Down here, that goes to a guy called the notario. It's the legal team called the notario. So your total closing cost of 5.1% will also get wire transferred with that last payment to escrow, and all those funds get dispersed at closing. So again, very much like a U.S. process, one of the other differences that viewers need to be aware of is there has to be someone physically present at closing. So if you think you may not be able to come down, I will often do a power of attorney where one of the attorneys on my legal team gets named as the power of attorney. And in case you can't come down for the closing or something happens, you know, you have a family emergency and you can't actually physically be here, the power of attorney can sign for you. So that's one of the important differences. And we'll often set that up pretty early in the process, shortly after you sign the, uh, the dual signed uh, purchase agreement. But it's it's a it's a relatively easy process. There's always someone here to walk you through each step of the process. When you're working with one of my team members, you get a little booklet that explains every single step of the process all the way through. So you know we make it very easy, even though it's a foreign country and a few things are different. We're here to hold clients' hands all the way through the process, and we have lots of written information to help you through it as well. I'm sure this will be very, very reassuring to anyone who's thinking about moving to San Miguel de Allende. And something else we'd like to touch on is investment and uh, return on investment, you know, investment opportunities. Why don't we talk about the potential return on investment in San Miguel de Allende's luxury real estate market, if, you, if you'd like to share some of that, Greg? Certainly. We're a, a very tourism-based uh, city here. Um, uh, the last statistic I saw for a little town of 150,000 people, we had 3 million visitors. 
in one year. That was uh, pre-pandemic. So we have a lot of visitors that come here. What that means is it's a great opportunity for a rental property. Now, a lot of my clients, they'll buy a home here and they really do plan to come down and they spend time here. And sometimes they might even spend two months or three months a year here, but they end up wanting to rent the property for the rest of the time. That's a great way to not only cover all of your expenses for carrying costs on the property, but you'll also earn you know, a return on your investment. It might be a little lower one if you're still staying in the property two or three months of the year versus buying something purely as an investment property. I have a number of clients that will come down and buy their main home here, and then they'll buy one or two other properties in San Miguel purely as a rental property. They just do nothing but rent it all year long. They never stay there. They just rent it. Now, in some cases, you can get double digit, low double digit ROIs, which is almost unheard of. That's a very difficult statistic to uh, to earn in the United States. So you're getting a great return on investment because of our tourism here. We have a lot of, you know, a higher occupancy and a great nightly rate for rental properties just because of the demand. I mean, once you've been named the number one city in the world nine times, a lot of people want to come and visit, right? So <laughs> That has to do with the great rental return. Another great statistic that a lot of my buyers don't think about, though, is what's called an internal rate of return. Remember, I have an MBA in finance, so I'm a little bit more numbers oriented than some realtors in town. And the IRR is really the true number that you want to look at if you're looking at a property down here as an investment, because we have great appreciation. So you'll have a good ROI, you know, from an annual uh, pre uh, an annual basis of renting the property, but your appreciation is what really makes that IRR, that internal rate of return, great over your holding period of let's say ten or ten or so years. As I mentioned a little earlier in today's video, you might get a, a, as much as a fifteen to twenty percent appreciation rate. So great investment opportunities for anybody that wouldn't want to rent a home that they're still living in at part-time or purely investing in something purely as a rental property. Both of them can provide good uh, ROIs. Fantastic. That's fantastic. And now that we are, now that we're at it, why don't you highlight maybe some of the areas with the highest growth potential in San Miguel? Sure. You know, in my little booklet, in our booklet that we send off to clients that inquire, as soon as you land on my website, you'll have the chance to inquire and request the Q&A info handbook. And one of the things that I talk about there is that property values are in, in San Miguel de Allende and rental rates, therefore your rental income, are based on your sideline and your walking distance to the parochia. That's our iconic Eiffel Tower of San Miguel. It's right in the very heart of town. It's right on the Hardeen, the town square. So all of the popular places, all the, the restaurants, the theaters, the live music venues, the art galleries, they're all working their way out of, from a concentric radius from, from that parochia. So all of the property values are based on your distance away from the parochia. The further away, the lower your appreciation rate and the lower your rental rate. Typically, most properties within a 15 minute walking radius are the most popular and therefore have the most appreciation and the best rental rate. Once you get beyond that 15 minute walking distance, and it's kind of a it's kind of a pro rata figure, you know, you'll drop maybe something like $25,000 in value for every 30 seconds further out. And that might sound sort of nitpicky, doesn't it? When I'm saying 30 seconds further out, but this is a very walkable community. So remember, a lot of my buyers love to look at buying here because of the walking distance factor. So if you if you end up in a purchasing a home that's 25 minutes walking distance, most people don't really consider that to be a normal walking distance. Within 15 minutes is, is more, more of a, a normal, you know, kind of walking radius. And those properties are the ones that are going to see the higher appreciation and the better rental rates from a, a rental perspective. So Centro being one of those, if you go on my website, you'll take a look, our website, you'll take a look and see the 13 best neighborhoods, but of those that are very popular and have the better rates of return on appreciation are going to be Centro, Guadiana, parts of San Antonio, parts of Obraje, uh, the lower parts of Balcones, you know, some of those kinds of neighborhoods that are closer and within that 15 minute relatively flat walking distance to the Hardeen. 
So those are the neighborhoods to kind of concentrate on for, of course, you're going to pay more for a property there, but you're going to have better appreciation and better rental rates. Yes, of course. Who doesn't want to just walk everywhere, right? Yeah. So now yeah, that we're at it, exactly, exactly. So now that we're at it, we should um, maybe talk a little bit about the lifestyle and amenities of, of San Miguel de Allende. And maybe, Greg, you could share with us some insights into the culture, the lifestyle that makes San Miguel de Allende just a very attractive uh, destination for luxury home buyers. Sure. We just talked about the biggest lifestyle factor, I think, which is that walkability. You know, a lot of us think of me included. I live within a 12 minute walk of the Hardeen. I love that. I've lived within walking distance of the Hardeen almost my entire 14 years of living here. We all love the fact that San Miguel de Allende is like a little European village where you can walk everywhere. So you'll hardly ever have to use your car. As an example, I have a year old car that only has about 3000 miles on it because I seldom have to drive. So it's a it's a, a very walkable community. We all love that we can roll out the door and be in a restaurant. For instance, I can be in six restaurants within 60 seconds of my home. If I want to walk a, another seven or eight minutes, I can be at another hundred. And if I want to walk, you know, 10 to 12 minutes, I can be within about 200 or 250 restaurants. This town has 550 restaurants on TripAdvisor. So for a little town of 150,000 people, we have an amazing culinary experience here. And the majority of those are very high-end, very nice restaurant dining opportunities. A lot of them celebrity chefs from other countries. One of the examples I love to share is one of the chefs here in town. Uh, he's a Mexican chef, but he had a very successful restaurant in London for 20 years. And when he decided to move back to his home country, he said, well, where shall I go? Well, San Miguel de Allende has become the culinary capital of Mexico. I'm moving back to San Miguel instead of back to Mexico City. So a lot of that has occurred here. We have a lot of Mexico City restaurants that have opened a second destination here in San Miguel. I also tell a lot of my buyers when they're asking about the lifestyle here that San Miguel de Allende has the largest social and cultural English language infrastructure of any destination anywhere in Mexico. Truly, I mean, that's when I say that, I mean that from a theatrical standpoint, music, opera, you name it, we have more of the English language operas, obviously not in English, <laughs> rarely at least, is it? But you've got at least subtitles, you know, you'll see the super titles up at the top that are in English and you don't find that in other parts of Mexico. So our uh, social and cultural infrastructure here is great. We have a lot of organizations that are, are easy to meet people. We have a lot of venues here that have weekly or monthly uh, events, like our or organic market here has a weekly event every Saturday, and about a thousand of us gringos all go and meet and greet, and you have farm-style seating where you're seating with other people you don't know, and there's an entertainer singing and people making breakfast and lunch, and it's a great way to meet people. And then the Fabrica Aurora is a big art gallery complex of about 43 art galleries and the first Saturday of every month, for instance, they have the art walk. And so two or 3,000 of us locals will go and meet and greet and have a glass of wine and listen to the band and walk around and see all the, the art galleries. So this, this city has a phenomenal opportunity to meet people. If you want to become active and really get involved, even if you're retired, we have 120 nonprofits in town. They're always looking for people with some good experience to want to put their heart where their cause is. And so if your cause is educating women, there's Mujeres in Cambio and Jovenes Adelante. If, uh, if, if your goal is to help kids get a good nutritious meal so that they can learn more at school, there's Feed the Hungry. If you care about healthcare for children, anybody under the age of 18, there's Patronato Pro Ninos, for instance. I've been on the board of Patronato Pronius and really support them. There's a lot of great organizations as well. And they love to have volunteers to you know, get involved. Casita Lind is another good one, for instance. And when you talk about the cultural infrastructure here, a lot of these organizations have a fundraiser. So once or twice a year, they'll have a big fundraiser. And it's just like in the United States, but you know, <laughs> instead of paying $5,000 a ticket, you're only paying $250 a ticket or something like that down here. So it's it's a it's a much more affordable way to support a good cause and go to a good event and have a, a fun time. The lifestyle down here is what draws my clients and me 
I'll live here the rest of my life. I've lived here 14 years and it's because of the lifestyle. I absolutely love it. I know you do too, Maya. And this though, viewers, while we're talking about lifestyle. So one of the things I'd love you to do, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube, our YouTube channel. We have a couple of them, but please subscribe to the YouTube channel you're viewing this on. You'll see a lot of other lifestyle videos on there as well, though, the things that talk about the lifestyle. And, and then a very important point, I think, is please go on our website. When you go on the website, there'll be the opportunity to sign up for this Q&A booklet that I talked about. So it'll cover in a lot more detail what we have briefly sort of touched on today. I think you'll find it very informative and very helpful. And from there, you can kind of explore a little, do on your own, you know, ask for a little more help if you like, but just do some early exploration. But make sure, again, subscribe to YouTube so that you can get our ongoing uh, videos that come up. And then go on the website and explore. There's some great things to find on our website. It's not just about real estate. It's about lifestyle. We'd love to have you come on down. Come join us. Well, thank you so much, Greg. It's been a fantastic conversation. I am really happy to uh, have talked about all of this with you. And well, we'll see each other on our next video. Let's do it again soon, Maya. Talk to you soon. Bye, Greg. See you soon. Viewers, thanks for joining us.